for uh, being patient with us. As you can see, uh, most of our team is in Lubasenshi, and my bags are also packed. After this event, I'm driving through the Copper Belt to see what's happening there in terms of the miners and all the things that have happened to them. Then where we're going to be for the next 12, 12 days in campaign. Uh, I arrived at 3 o'clock this morning, and obviously I have been following the events in the country. And uh, some of the issues that have been happening are extremely worrying. And although I'm in transit to the, um, uh, to the constituents where the election is taking place, um, I'm flanked by our media team, and uh, I'm going to make a few remarks on the crisis that has befallen us as a nation. Members of the press, on the 7th of September this, this, this month, the Cabinet of the Republic of Zambia met to discuss various issues, including the following. The agenda list of Cabinet was agenda item number one, was first, 51st independence celebration. Number two was construction of prisons through PP, PPPs. The third item on the agenda of government was traditional medicines and alternative medicines. The fourth one was declaration of the National Health Week. The fifth one was construction and purchase of mission properties abroad. And the sixth one, agenda item, was the importation of power by, by Zesco and a briefing on Kariba repairs. Fellow Zambians, I was totally shocked when I read the press release concerning the cabinet meeting of September 7th. I was shocked because of what the patriotic front government was discussing during this time when our beloved country is in a very serious crisis of monumental proportions. How can they be discussing such irrelevancies during such a crisis? How can the power issue only be the sixth agenda item? Our conclusion is that this government has no vision, it has no direction, and absolutely no solutions. And we don't seem to be seeing new ideas to steer us out of our current trouble. The President Edgar Lungu, in my view, cannot even manage to call a press conference at which he could address the nation on the most pressing needs that affect the Zambian people. By the placing of energy concerns and the load shedding as a sixth agenda item shows the Zambian people how disconnected this government is from the pain that the Zambians are going through. There's also a conclusion that this government does not really think that this load shedding is a, is a major deal, as the Americans would call it. I want to confirm that this is a major deal with a great capacity to bring this government down in the next election. They have belittled it, but it is a major concern on the minds of every Zambian, on the mind of every Zambian, at least on my mind, that if we can have two, two blackouts per day in terms of load shedding, we've never had this before. And this calls for an emergency, if not a declaration of an emergency by the president to find a solution. This agenda item should have been, must be, the first agenda item for this government if they understood priority. In the midst of all this, our people are looking for the president and his team to provide a sort of roadmap, as it were, to stabilize the ship. The country is in despair at the moment. This country, ladies and gentlemen, needs a leader. Right now, it appears as though the ship as it hits the rocks and almost sinks, everybody's asking the question, who is the captain? Do we have a captain in the cabin? A lot of Zambians believe that the country is on autopilot and Zambia desperately needs a leader moving forward. We need strong leadership. 
And let me briefly outline the challenges that we are facing as a country and the immediate need to fix them. As I outline these problems that we are facing as a country, I'm aware that there are those who are benefiting from this administration, uh, both in government and outside government, that do not really care about the state of our economy, who don't really care about the difficulties that the Zambians are going through, because they themselves are benefiting uh, from the incompetence of this government. I can say that this is the most incompetent government that Zambia has ever had, and the reason is simple, that it's unclear to see the vision of this government. Let me deal with the economic crisis that we are facing right now. And I think that a lot of you are aware of this because it's been in the media. Your media people have been reporting on these issues. And there seems to be no response from this government. The reason we speak about these issues as opposition leaders is to give an opportunity to government to correct the wrongs. Unfortunately, this government thinks that when we challenge them, we are doing politics and we are against them. The challenges that face the Zambian people are real. They are not an imagination. People are having difficulties putting food on their tables. People are having difficulties living in, the, in light because there's Lord shedding. So these are not politics. This is real life. And if this government was smart, if this government was smart, instead of releasing useless political rhetoric in response to our statements, they'll get some intelligent people from university or somewhere to answer us and respect what we are saying with some kind of intelligence. But now they say, no, no, MMD is finished. Uh, UPND is a tribal party. That, those are not answers. The answer is, where is the electricity? And when are you bringing it back? It doesn't matter whether you call me that he's a finished member. I'm still here. I'm not finished. I'm concerned about electricity. We need answers from this government and not rhetoric that does not help anyone. It doesn't matter how much you insult us. Your situation will not improve unless you listen to what we're saying. When I was vice president under Levi Mwanawasa, Mr. Michael Sada used to say things that were very hateful, very hateful. But I remember sometimes President Mwanawasa would call me and say, Mr. Vice President, this, this crazy man has said one, two, three, and I'm very upset. And then under his voice he would say, but if you're under, but although he's confused, it's a point. How do we make sure we, we do it so that he has no more points? That's what we expect from this government. When we say something, we love Zambia. We care about Zambia. And we expect them in the dark to work on some of the proposals we are making to them. Because once they improve the living lot of our people, even our lives are better placed. But look at the economy as it stands now. Today, the Kwacha dollar rate recently breached the 10 Kwacha psychological barrier to a dollar. The Kwacha has been the worst performing currency in the world out of 150 countries being monitored by Bloomberg in the third quarter of 2015, dropping the value of the kwacha by 27%. The PF government is already considering introducing foreign exchange controls, which will only worsen the situation and take us back to the unique days. Secondly, we have a very unfriendly investment climate with many projects worth billions of dollars bogged down by corruption, nepotism, and bureaucracy. Nationalization of Zamtel by the PF government in 2012 sent a terrible message, and I've made a very strong statement about this, that it was wrong for government to repossess Zamtel because it's going to cost us more than a billion uh, dollars uh, through court cases and trying to get a loan of 300 million as they have already proposed. It was a very costly and illogical move that this government made. Thirdly, we have an ever-expanding budget deficit due to excessive reckless spending by the PF government. The IMF has projected that it could reach, the deficit could reach 7.7%. The Patriotic Front has proposed that it's going to reach 6%. We are in great doubt of their projection. We agree with the IMF's projection of the deficit going to 7.7 by the end of the year. Fourthly, 
We have had incoherent haphazard economic policies, such as the burdensome statutory instruments 33 and 55. The Patriotic Front removed the tax breaks negotiated by the movement for multi-party democracy for the Pepsi factory and suddenly slapped them with a $3 million tax bill instead of just waiting for the expiry of their concession. It's amazing how extravagant this government has been. We call it a lack of capacity, and I'll talk about this in the next few minutes. Fifthly, we now have the lowest copper prices in six years. Copper accounts, as you are aware, for 70% of our exports as a country. The PF want us to believe that there is nothing they can do to mitigate the situation. However, this is not the first time that this has happened. It happened during our rule as MMD, but yet we managed to cushion the effects for our people, and that is the place and the role of government. We went through the worst economic global recession, if you remember, between 2007 and 2009, and yet the people of Zambia hardly felt it. And in fact, the economy actually grew during the global recession here in Zambia. So let, let, so let not the PF keep using useless excuses that it is there, there's nothing they can do about the effects of the low copper prices. Let them provide solutions. Ugufa Afebu president is not enough. Once you get the presidency, the challenges you face during the tenure of your presidency, you must solve them. This is not about crooking people and you become president. This is not about buying votes and you become president and think that there is a honeymoon at State House for the rest of your tenure. You corrupt yourself into the presidency. I think you have to perform magic to answer questions that affect the people that have put you in office. So this excuse of saying that this is a regional problem is not accepted by MMD. You are voted in because they think you're a smart guy who can find answers in a difficult time. And if there's no smart guy in State House, the words will be, it's happening everywhere. We didn't vote you to be an everywhere president. They voted you in to be a president for Zambia, so that when Zimbabwe is going through problems, Namibia is going through problems, South Africa is going through problems, you stand out as a light in darkness and say, here is my leadership. When things are bad, my country is shining. That is the leadership we are looking for. And this government, we put in place in early this year, has absolutely no capacity to shine. And I'll explain why they don't have a capacity. If the other economic challenge we face is Zambia is now at risk of having double-digit inflation in 2016 because of the budget deficit and the weakening of the quacha, which has begun forcing prices upwards. G, Zambia now has reduced foreign direct investment due to the Chinese stock market crisis and impeding U.S. Um, Federal Reserve interest hike, which is likely to come. H, Ever since the PF took over, there has been no new mining initiative or investment that they have brought in as a party. All the investments coming in were prepared before their tenure and during our tenure as MMD. The PF have messed up things by, the, by antagonizing the mining houses and mining companies have stopped investing in this country. And that is a fact that you media people have been reporting about. Just last year, First Quantum Mining announced that they were suspending a planned $1.5 billion investment. Barry Gold also announced that they were considering pulling out of Zambia. Just a few days ago, Mopane Copper Mines announced that they were closing down for 18 months. All these just demonstrate how incompetent the PF government is. Just in case you don't know the psychological and political move by Mopane. Mopani says they are going to shut down their operations for the next 18 months. One thing you should understand is that they have realized that under PF, they are going to go into a loss. So they are also praying and fasting as Mopani that af after 18 months, PF will be out of government next year and they can come back and restart reinvesting in this country. That's their hope. That's why they've given 18 months post the PF in government. I would not be surprised that if by some crooked means PF won the election 
I do not think Mopani will be interested in continuing to invest in this country. And what is going to happen during this time, number one, there's going to be job losses uh, in the next 18 months. As you are aware, Mopani is one of the highest employers in our country. The tax income that is coming from the taxes being paid by Mopani is going to be compromised. The job losses are going to be recorded because our people are going to be laid off and poverty is going to increase as a result of this 18 months that Mopani has undertaken. As you can see, there's no vice president who has been rushed there to deal with Mopane and talk with them and reason with them that they don't do this. I remember when I was vice president, when we had a crisis on the Copper Belt, President Manwasa would call me at night, even it's 11 p.m., I said, early tomorrow morning, I want you at the mines, because he knows that's where our money comes from. Anybody who disturbs that place disturbs the very economy of our country. But I can assure you, probably the vice president is in Bangkok as I speak or somewhere, because that is what they know to do instead of solving the problems that affect us. This 18 months by Mopane is going to be extremely costly to all of us, and we are going to pay dearly uh, for this. Finally, on the issue of the economy, poverty is worsening every single day in our country. The MMD is the only party in Zambia that left the country better than it found it. UNIP left it worse than they inherited from the colonialists. And PF, in just three years, managed to take the country backwards, and they shall leave it worse than they found it, as you can see already. MMD reduced poverty during its tenure. The Patriotic Front is multiplying poverty on a daily basis because they do not have an economic policy to be pursued. That's on the economy, and there's a lot I can say. But let me come to energy, the energy crisis that we have. Number one, the massive power deficit that has, now been that has not been arrested and will get far worse before it gets better. The nation may have a total na nationwide blackout towards the end of the year. The lost productivity is colossal as businesses scale down or close down. All companies are affected from huge mining operations to small scale, um, to small uh, and medium uh, scale businesses. And this is affecting all business across the board. By the time MMD left government, we had already foreseen this problem and we initiated two major energy projects. The first one was Itazitaji. By the time we left, we were 50% through with making it ready in time to mitigate this problem. The other thing was Mamba, Mamba Collieries. It was also 50% finished. When PF came, they diverted their actions to politics. And now we are in this state where they are telling us that it's going to get worse by the end of this year, with blackouts being even more severe than they are. By 1st November this year, MMD would have finished with the Tejiteji, with Mamba Collieries, and the power issue would not be at the scale that it is in. This government is referring or comparing itself to South Africa, that even South Africa has load shedding. The difference between this government and the South African government is that the South African government is a responsible government. They inform their people as to where they're going. And they give them the short term, medium term, and long term plan on how to deal with this matter. We don't know when we are going to have a reprieve from this problem. South Africa has already projected that in the next few months, in fact, they have reduced load shedding already because they are now opening other plants that are feeding their grids in order to reduce the pressure on their national grid. We are not doing that. And I know there are Zambians who feel this is okay. They don't care because we have been already confused that governance is just us saluting or seeing motorcades pass. We don't demand responsibility from our governments. To be a government official today is a happy thing in Zambia, because they know Zambians can only talk and leave them to continue to steal. And MMD is looking at alternatives on how to make this government listen, because right now they are not listening. So this is a challenge that we have on load shedding. 
And I want to confirm that load shedding is encouraging more crime in the country. We have relatively higher prices of petroleum products, even when the rest of the world is re reducing these prices. Fourthly, we recently had a scandal of contaminated oil, feed, oil feedstock at Indeni. You remember that? This appears to be a case of corruption in the oil procurement process. No one has publicly apologized for this in the PF government, and no one has been fired as a result of it. This problem has caused huge amounts of money to be wasted to fix the problem by purchasing purification equipment. This is the problem that we have as a country. We are talking now because we think we are talking to a listening government, but no one is listening to us. Who is responsible for this? What punishment? Has the Minister of Energy been fired? and replaced as a result of this as what happens in other countries? The answer is no, because to PF, this is the normal operation. And I think that Zambians need to hold this administration uh, accountable. Number five, Inden is outdated in our view and has, been, and has been outdated for a long time. It produces expensive petrol, diesel, and paraffin due to using outdated equipment. Zambia needs a new refinery. There has been very low and slow investment in the energy sector due to lack of confidence in the patriotic front. When PF took over, Mamba and Batoka Gorge were about half done, like I've already said, and within six months of forming government, MMD is committed to ensuring that these are actualized in order to resolve the issue of energy. Under the PF government, there's no foreseeable solution for at least five to ten years since they have proved they are incapable of providing solutions. Let me talk about the debt crisis. Zambia, number one, Zambia now has the worst debt since the hippic completion point of 2005 under the MMD. Current total debt stands around almost 10 billion United States dollars, which includes for, both foreign and local debt. When we include the debt, or to contractors and suppliers, the debt is even more. Nobody is talking about the massive debt owed to contractors and suppliers who are made to wait for more than a year before they can get paid. All of you know that the Tamangas of Zambia cannot afford to remain unpaid for one year. If your Tamanga is owed by government for one year, you are assured of collapsing as a business owner. And a lot of businesses in Zambia have collapsed as a result of the incompetence of this government to pay the suppliers to government. We demand that those who have not been paid be paid and reduce on the amazing expenditure of this government. Secondly, the PF keep getting Kaloba as if there is no tomorrow. They have, an, they have on average borrowed $1 billion for every year that they have been in power in three euro bonds. They are about to borrow another $1 billion to cover Indeco, Zamtel, and other pet projects. We have this information that we have people already outside this country hunting for another, another bond. Future generations shall be indebted due to the recklessness of the patriotic front. Today we are talking like we are out of our minds, but there are Zambians there that are as equally concerned as I am about how this government is ruining opportunities of our people. See, the cost of borrowing has been escalating, reflecting increased lack of confidence by lenders. The first euro bond, we got it at 5%. The last one was at 9%. The next one will probably be at 11%, because now it's Kaloba. Our rating is going down, so our prettiness or handsomeness to borrow is deteriorating because when they increase the, 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 the interest. And so we don't look good to the international community anymore. We are not handsome anymore. We are not pretty anymore to uh, receive it at a lower rate. And therefore, the rate of borrowing keeps going up. And this is, we are doing it as though we don't have young people. So there are 
the cost of borrowing, like I've said, continues to go, to go up. The weakening kwacha means that repayments will actually be double because we have to earn twice as much kwacha to pay for the same dollars that we borrowed. And the kwacha, this, the kwacha has depreciated 100% since we left office. This is criminal. It is the arrogance of this government. And it is a reckless move by this government. 100% depreciation of the kwacha since we handed over the reins of power to our colleagues in the, in the PF. We are running the risk of defaulting on our debt seven years from now when the first euro bond comes due. The consequences are too ghastly to contemplate. Let me talk about the employment that the patriotic front is singing about. We have very high unemployment, especially for the youth. Whenever there is an economic crisis, the youth are the first ones to be led off. High unemployment is leading to more ju crime and juvenile delinquency. I want to say that the 500,000 new jobs that the PF is talking about will fail because, because they are not prudent with national resources. They think that they can employ more people next year for political party reasons. Let me talk about the political crisis that we face at the moment. Historically, we have spoken about the importance of our national unity within the context of our ethnic and tribal diversity. We are appreciative of the peace and unity that our country has continued to enjoy over the years since independence. However, in the immediate recent past, we have seen a sharp polarization in the country in terms of political views, and this has all centered on tribe. We now have the infamous Rupia Banda led Wako Niwako, tribal polarization of our people from the East, in rallying around a fellow Easterner and now President Edgar Lungu at the expense of his own political party, the MMD. Arabi has poisoned the minds of his people against the people from the Northern Bloc, where, when we are all traditional cousins and have lived in peace for many decades. He has never wanted a northerner to lead MMD or this country uh, again, as noticed by what happened in the last uh, election. Arabi has now taken his Wako Niwako philosophy into PF with terrible consequences. The late president, Mr. Michael Sata, must be turning in his grave. I want to state that we are all created equal by God, and there should be no shame disadvantage or even ill treatment of any kind arising from the fact that you are one tribe or the other. We should all be proud of our tribes and live together in peace and harmony as one Zambia and one nation. Let me make a few points on this matter. We now have the worst cadre violence since independence and MMD believes in peace under my leadership. That is why you have not seen violence ever since I took over this party because it's not part of our culture and it's not part of the New Hope MMD. We have corrupt election electioneering in which the PF is buying off people like what happened in Solwezi. It's a very dark season for Zambia that when a president himself will put his hand in the pocket and give millions of kwacha to a candidate belonging to another political party, and go to bed at night and fall asleep and even has dreams and wakes up, it spells a crisis for the country where there's no conscience of pain for doing such an immoral act. What else can this president do and still go to bed at night without any touch of his conscience? And some Zambians don't care. Wonder if my politics share the lamba, because the more lamba people we put, our lamba we put in politics, the more political we are. And I know there are people who say, "I've been never take you to church, you know, if you share, share my shilu, I've ever, but kabo la la, even if I'm a politics, maybe your country which you form on a special island should be governed like that. But Zambia, we are going to fight for its spirit and soul, and people with morality and integrity must find space." And it may not look possible now, but this space will be created for morality and integrity to take off this country once and for all. And I want to promise, 
Once morality and integrity takes over this country, it will be difficult for a drunkard to ever win an election. It will be difficult for a, uh, a criminal to ever win an election in Zambia. It will become complicated for Wachintomfa to ever win an election in this country. Because things will change now. No, we can't vote for Kachasu because Zambia is a Christian nation. That day is coming. Some of you may not see it, but that day is coming because Zambians are getting tired of what they call immoral politics. And I'm very disappointed about what happened in Solwezi myself. We now have tribal voting and we need to deal with this. The voter apathy that we are seeing in our country must be addressed under MMD during by-elections. Uh, our turnout was 44%. But now it's under 30% because never in the history of our country have we ever had so much, uh, by, so many by-elections. I've never seen that um, ever since independence. This patriotic front has kept our Zambian people busy. Let me now deal with the moral crisis of our country as I conclude. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, corruption is now so entrenched and endemic in Zambia. It now, it has now... It is now done on the rooftops instead of under the table. The PF has a culture of winning at any cost, and this is the problem that we face today. Because PF knows that if they reason, they can't win, because they don't have enough reason to use to govern this country. So instead, they use power of corruption in order for them to remain in power. Let's look at the solutions, fellow Zambians. Do not worry or panic because of the challenges that we face today. We must not overemphasize the negatives at the expense of solutions. We must think outside the box, and creativity will be the utmost importance at the moment. We must not allow any opposition party to paint a gloomy and hopeless picture of ourselves to the citizens, to the investors, neighbors, or even potential business partners. I am calling upon all Zambians to all do what they can to save our country from complete collapse by increasing our productivity as a nation. We only have one Zambia, only one Zambia. So let us work together as a people. I can give you example after example, because people think that as opposition, all we do is just criticize. Not too long ago, I was addressing one of the biggest investment forums in South Africa called the Global Business Forum at which I was one of the key speakers. I took 45 minutes to persuade those investors to look at Zambia and take it as a partner in investment. And that was reported in your media. And as opposition, we can also contribute to that. When I was merely a high commissioner in, in, in Canada, I spent day and night negotiating for an $8 billion investment in Lumwana mine when Barry God bought it from Equinox. There was an investment when I was high commissioner that came from Canada of $8 billion. All of us, in our different stations in serving Zambia, we can contribute to becoming part of the solution to the many difficulties that our country is facing. So I'm calling upon all Zambians to, to do all that we can to save our country. And I appeal to political leaders of all political parties, while we condemn this government, let's see what we can do from our corner to make our country a better country. Let me give an ad, a piece of advice to President Lungu. Mr. President, we are not your enemies. You are actually the biggest enemy of yourself. We are your colleagues. We understand the challenge of your office, but you are not helping your office because your priorities are veering you away from becoming a factor in the next election. I want to advise on behalf of the MMD, the president, advice number one, arrest the out of control government expenditure and let us live within our means. We cannot keep spending like there is no tomorrow, like there is no future generations in our country. I said before, there is no war in Zambia. Therefore, there is no need for you, Mr. President, to have such a long entourage of vehicles and ministers, police, an entire battalion following you behind. Nobody wants to kill you. 
it is important that you look at our friends in the West, that sometimes there are only three vehicles with them going from place to place. All this halabaloo is just unnecessary expenditure. Zambians don't want to kill you, Mr. President. Zambian wants you to bring electricity back. Zambians want millimute to become cheaper. Zambians want jobs. They don't want to kill you. In fact, they are shocked at the levels of security you have, securing you from what? I think it is important that we reduce that expenditure. <coughs> this issue of every fourth plane we see in the sky, the president is in it, going somewhere, whether it's to Congo, whether it's Burundi, it is totally unnecessary. Stay home and deal with the issues of electricity. Stay home and deal with creating a proper environment for investment. Show the Zambians that your concern are the people and not the plans. In Shiala after next year's election, and then you'll be remembering that I wish I flew less and worked more, but it will be too late. I advise as a friend and as a colleague, as somebody who has flew in those planes as well, not at your level, but at vice president's level, people used to tell us, stay home and answer the questions of the Zambian people. My advice is reduce the expenditure. And even the people you travel with, travel with relevant officers in order for you to make an impact. This is free advice from a, a colleague and a friend who has nothing to lose. Secondly, stop corruption in government. There's a country I just came from last week where a president lost, not because he himself was corrupt, but because he didn't control his cabinet from corruption. They were so corrupt that they felt that this president was weak. weak. And there's a feeling now that this president has allowed people to surround him that are professional corrupt people that Zambians know already, and the president needs to uh, remove himself from those people. Thirdly, get rid of weak ministers in cabinet and put better quality people, get rid of cadres in important positions. The problem that is in this government is that the quality of ministers is the worst in the region. Just because they fought and won the election does not mean they should be ministers. They can be they can have lower portfolios. Mr. President, change the quality of leaders in your cabinet. Put some intelligent brains there so that when they sit in cabinet, they can say, Mr. President, we are going the wrong way. Not once that year, Mr. President, we fully agree with you. We concur with you, Mr. President. Our hearts are fully with you. No. Let the people that can think properly be able to guide cabinet with you. The current crop you have will lead you into a ditch. It is important for you to, brave, to be brave enough, Mr. President, and get some intelligent heads. There's no shortage of them in this country, and we think that this will work for you. Fourthly, begin to consult and use our competent Zambian de technocrats. Zambia has no shortage of brains. Fifthly, stop antagonizing investors with incoherent, confusing policies. The technocrats will guide you in this. Number six, Make it easy for business to be con conducted in Zambia. On the economy, Mr. President, give confidence to businessmen so that they keep foreign exchange in Zambia and stabilize the kwacha. Secondly, fast track projects that have been bogged down by corruption. Number three, make mining taxation predictable and stable. Number four, make stable, clear policies. Number five, arrest spending and get a budget deficit to zero. This will also curtail inflation. Number six, make investor-friendly policies and systems. Number seven, diversify investors uh, you know, taken from the east and west. And number eight, make it a goal to grow the economy to 10% per annum, which will be my goal once MMD forms government again to grow the economy by 10%. Uh, per annum. As MMD, we shall bring in 20 billion US dollars worth of investment in our first year in office once we form government after 2016. There are many projects that PF has sat on 
and we shall revive and complete them. This will also contribute to employment creation. As MMD, we are committed to starting off where we left in the sector of the economy. And on energy, we have already proposed that you liberalize the electricity tariffs and bundle and professionalize Zesco, give back oil procurement function to Indeni and let them inspect from source through the entire value chain, get rid of the import tariff on finished products, stop the corrupt oil procurement which is going on right now by PF in order for them to raise money for the election next year, and we challenge you to build new oil refineries in order for us to take advantage of the byproducts of the refineries, which include bitumen uh, for roadworks, hydrocarbons for plastic products, nitrogen for fertilizer production, and all this at a far much cheaper price. All this we shall do as MMD when we form government. On the debt, the debt, debt crisis, number one, please, Mr. President, stop the caloba. Stop any further borrowing now. Shelve any plans to borrow more euro bonds. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Because you see, when you start to borrow, it's addictive. You have a quality chamber, you have a quality walwa. Once you start to drink, you become an alcoholic. You can't stay without another drink. That's how Ukukongola is a spirit, it's a disease. So we ask you and challenge you, Mr. President, stop Kalova before you become addicted to euro bonds. Number two, be prudent on spending, which will improve our credit rating. These are things we did as MMD. We are not asking you to do what we didn't do. Thirdly, grow the economy quickly to avoid default. MMD shall have a target to growing the economy at 10% per annum during my first term in office. On the political crisis, stop Kada violence. It doesn't help anybody. The ones who die are our people in the constituencies. Stop corrupt electioneering. If you say you are popular, win through popularity. Let not money be the thing that you use on our poor population and speak against tribal voting as a president. On the moral crisis, I've always said that the equitable delivery of goods and services to any people depends on the morality and the integrity of its leaders. We need new moral leaders of integrity in our country. Corrupt elements must be removed from government and replaced with people with a proven track record. May I say that just as much as some people don't care about morality in politics, the results of immoral politicians are the ones we're experiencing right now. And it's up to you, Zambians. Is this the Zambia we want? And if there are any Zambians out there that want a better Zambia, a Zambia that we can be proud of, I want you to join me and the new MMD in moving this country forward for better prospects. I thank you and God bless you. First of all, I want to put it on record that MMD is an individual entity. It was an individual entity 
before we even talked about an alliance with the Patriotic Front, it was an individual entity during the times that uh, those talks could have been going on. It is an individual. It is an individual entity today. After, it was not a hidden fact that there were attempted talks between MMD and the Patriotic Front. This does not mean we should compromise our values and our views and the feelings of the Zambian people. We still hold that what is wrong is wrong, whether it is done by the Patriotic Front or even Mr. Arabi, who was supposedly one of us. We condemn that. Now, none of us should give the impression that in Zambian politics, alliances are not discussed.